most of the breaths that have the uh, parentheses around them, I don't actually take myself. By the way, I apologize for not cutting my microphone off. That's awful to listen to a flute through a microphone like this. Sorry. Um, the reason I put some of those breaths in there, I really like the first four measures in one breath. But if you have a young player, or if you are a young player, you really can't get, can't maintain a good sound that way, then breathe at two bars. You can do it musically if you work on it. And I want to hear a good sound. And to me, it's more important that young players develop the ability to fill up the instrument with air than it is for them to, to hold something four measures when it doesn't sound good. All right, so I put in uh, those with the, uh, the parentheses. Um, the ones, uh-oh, oh no. <laughs> you all have no idea <laughs> what, what's been going on up here. And by the way, thank you to Alex and Jamie Harrison today for helping me with this. Thanks, guys. Um, the breaths at the end of the first section, I lift um, the next to the last bar, fourth line down.
Well, it's the musicality. And it's your strict adherence to good rhythm. If you work on this piece with a metronome, with and without the metronome, with very, very good rhythm, keeping that pulse very straight, and then experiment with it. When it gets louder, maybe you, you feel it, the pulse pushing a little bit. When it gets softer or toward the end of the phrase, <coughs> you want to pull back a little bit. It must be done musically. So also listen to a lot of really fun musicians. Some of the things on YouTube are good and some of them are not. So make sure what you're listening to uh, is uh, good quality stuff. All right, let's move on to the second A2.